Who you are and what you believe in can leave a lasting impact on generations to come. We talk about leaving a legacy and inheritance for our children and our grandchildren. What about those living in nations around the world? What kind of legacy will you leave them? When you belong to a community of believers who not only love and care for each other, but also for those they have never met. From the beginning, together as a united community of believers, CLM has grown and impacted the nation of Israel in ways that would have not been possible without people like you. Many people ask, why would you do this for the nation of Israel? We are instructed in Genesis 12 and 3 to do just that, to bless the nation of Israel. We are not meant to change the world all at once. We are meant to sow seeds of hope and love into individuals, families, and communities, one precious life at a time. Then we can stand back and watch these lives blossom and produce seeds of their own, continuing the hope and the legacy that we have planted into good soil. This is exactly what you do as a supporter and a covenant partner of Kurt Landry Ministries. You give to the Holocaust survivors meals and much needed assistance so that they have beautiful memories in their last days, leaving a legacy for the future of Israel. You provide musical instruments and instruction for children so that they can hear the beautiful sounds of music in turbulent areas in Israel. You provide resources to victims of human trafficking, giving these young women a future and a hope that they thought they could never have. You provide lone soldiers and their families with meals, food boxes, during some of the most difficult circumstances in their lives. You plant trees in Israel. You plant trees in Israel's desert as a way of saying, yes, we stand with you and you will not be moved. Sometimes the greatest mark we can leave in life is leaving a legacy of hope and light behind for future generations. That is what leaving a legacy is all about, changing the world one life at a time. On behalf of those in Israel, we say, Todaraba, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much and Todaraba. Welcome to Kurt Landry Ministries. Here we go. So let's give a big shout. Shabbat Shalom. Let's give a big wave. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> this Shabbat, this is the one right before Passover. It's always really special. I've asked Pastor Tim to connect the dots from what uh, Apostle Chuck Pierce. How many got to hear Apostle Chuck Pierce's words? Boy, wasn't that special? 
And so now you're going to hear the backstory from Pastor Tim as only he can carry it because he lived it. And so uh, he's going to, a lot of what was discussed with uh, Apostle Chuck, he's going to connect the dots of what he was speaking about so that it can become clear and more on purpose and intensified. So we're going to get ready for that. But let's start by praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Just a slight update. Um, uh, Israel is in good hands. Amen. You, you wit- Come on, give the Lord a shout. Yeah, over 300 uh, incoming projectiles of different flavors and uh, 99% of them being knocked down uh, is quite the modern day miracle. So let's give the Lord a shout. And let's give a shout to the United States for vetoing the uh, Palestinian statehood. Hallelujah. So you can see things are starting to turn, which was prophesied about this Passover 5784. Say, I'm ready ready. to go through my doors doors. of of destiny. It's just in time. I was down to one bar (laughs) on my battery, (laughs) and I'm ready to recharge in Yeshua's name. Let's go ahead and read this out loud. All of us, let's decree it together. Ready? When you go to war... Can you say, in Yeshua's name? name. We pray for the peace peace of Jerusalem Jerusalem. and all of Israel. Israel. And we decree victory, victory. peace, Peace. and prosperity prosperity. in Yeshua's name. name. Let's give a shout. Hallelujah. Father God, God, we pray pray for the persecuted church church. all over the world. world. Let a fresh anointing anointing. fall upon her her. to be a breaker, breaker. victorious, Victorious. salt and light light. in Yeshua's name. name. Let's give a great big shout. And this one's for you tonight. Father God, God, every wall wall in my soul soul that's blocking blocking my ability ability to embrace embrace the exceedingly, exceedingly, abundantly, abundantly, above all I could ask or think, let it come down down. in Yeshua's name. name. Let's give a great big shout. Hallelujah. So far as you may be dismissed, let's give him a great big hand clap. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a great big hand clap. So let's welcome Pastor Tim and Sandy as they come up and light the Shabbat candles. Let's welcome them. Come on, give him a big shout. Hallelujah. All right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. One more time. Shabbat shalom. Now you hit it. 
It is such a privilege and such an honor to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Sometimes, you know, it's very easy to become complacent and to fall into the routine. And I pray that for myself and for everyone here, that never becomes the way it is with you, that it's just a routine. It's just something that we do on Friday night. It's not something we just do on Friday night. This is a privilege and an honor to be in obedience to the Lord. I used to have a school teacher that told me over and over, when all else fails, follow the instructions. So tonight we're going to follow the instructions. Amen. Come on. Preferably sooner rather than later. So if you are prepared for a Sabbath blessing, if you're prepared for a Sabbath blessing, if you're prepared for the Sabbath blessing, yes. then let's say the blessing first in the Hebrew. Baruch Atah Adonai. Baruch Atah Adonai. Eloheinu Melech Aholam. Eloheinu Melech Aholam. Asher Kitchenu Bimitzvotav. Vizavanu. Vizavanu. Lahadlak. Lahadlak. Ner Shel Shabbat. Ner Shel Shabbat. And now in the English, blessed are you. Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us to kindle the lights of Shabbat. So, Father, tonight, on this special night, Father, we thank you, Lord, in advance. Lord, for a visitation of your spirit in this house. Lord, Moses said, show me your glory. Father, I pray tonight you'll show your glory in these temples and these houses. Let the Holy Spirit come and teach the Lord and direct and guide and direct. Father, make us aware of the presence of the Lord and may your power flow through each and every one of us, Lord, in this season of time as we approach the return of Messiah. Father, we thank you that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Father, Tonight, we are expecting miracles from your hand. And Father, most importantly, we're expecting to be able to gaze into the eyes of our Messiah as we journey into your word. And if you're in agreement, you would say amen and amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Tim, if you just stay up, let's welcome Pastor Tim as he... As he brings this word... Come on, give him a hand clap. I know many of you are new, even if you've been here four or five years, but there was so much confirmation, and you need to know this, I, I didn't discuss anything with Apostle Chuck, okay? So he's, he was just bringing things from the Holy Spirit. But if you know the back end of what he was confirming, because there's two things I want you to grasp tonight. Number one is the moment. You are in a moment. Not just tonight, but tomorrow, Sunday and Monday. You're, you're in a moment. You're in a moment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You, you are in a moment. So you know the enemy is going to do everything he can to try to distract you from the moment. Yes. So you need to stay in the spirit. You need to intentionally focus on the Lord so that you can be 100% in the moment. Say, I'm going to be in the moment. The, the other thing that was so confirming about what he was saying about the moment was... Uh, that really blessed us so much was he talked about this place is in perfect time and in perfect alignment. And so, yeah, give the Lord. 
So I want to give all of the staff here, all of House of David, all of the pastors and the different ones that are here, those of you that support, let's give all of you a great big hand clap. Thank you. Come on. Thank you so much. Because you support us to uh, march to a different drum. And, and we appreciate that. But it turns out that this drum is right on time, at the right time, at the right place. So let's welcome Pastor Tim as he connects the dots. Thank you. Come on, give me a great big hand clap. Okay, you can be seated. I was asked this evening, he says, what's this going to be, about an hour and a half? And I said, no. <laughs> As Rabbi was saying, the things that Chuck brought last week, um, really is an, a new season of time. You know, there's, when he was talking about knowing your moment, and he talked about the struggle of how it was to get here for him. Well, he operates at one of the highest levels, you know, prophetic ministry. And so if the enemy can mess with him, don't feel like you're being picked on if you've had a few attacks to get here, you know? So it comes with the journey. Just know that you're not going to stay here. You're moving forward. You know? The attacks come and the attacks go. You have a seasons of that. But as he was visiting, and what I was um, really impressed by was he began giving his, just his testimony of how he got here, how he got to where he was, as far as his early life and being saved and being raised by the ones he was raised and the impartation that took place in his life. All of that is preparatory work for where he was going and where he is today, okay? Just like all of us, all of you have been through some stuff to get you ready for what's happening now, right? One of the words that he spoke was, new is now, new is now. And because of the way his battle and the struggle for him getting here showed me in the spirit realm, the warfare that's over the embrace of the one new man. You know, because he's been saying, and Chuck has been a Zionist for a long time, but one new man is something that's really new to the church world and the large. Because I can remember being raised up and being taught by all the prophecy teachers because I was a student of, and still am a student of eschatology, saying, you know, Israel is here, the church is here, and the two shall never meet. Yeah, that was the, the doctrine that I was hearing, and yet in Scripture I was seeing something different. So one of the things that he was talking about was, he said that the Lord revealed to him early on was covenant. And if you can understand covenant, that is a kiss from God. Early on, as he began to read, it says that it just became apparent to him over and over. That's something that is caught, not taught. That's where the Lord opens up the book to you and you begin to see God's plan. In this season of time, this Moed, we're in a Moed. We're on God's time, right? You're, you're here in a field outside of Fairland, Oklahoma. Um, 
You're not celebrating the bunny. You're in a field getting ready to have a lamb. Okay? That sets you apart as being a little strange. But it's a good strange. It's different. So as he was talking about covenant and the things that as he was reading through the books, he recognized the moment of what was being put into him. But there was a time where it comes where all of that stuff becomes a reality to you. And so his battle to get into this house, he said, I had to be in house of David for this Shabbat. He said he'd been keeping you know, Shabbat for years and years, never failed to keep Shabbat. So that's one of the reasons why keeping Shabbat, you are a witness and a testimony to the world, but also our brothers that used to think it very strange when I was teaching a Sunday school class and said, why are you teaching this Jewish stuff? Because our Messiah is Jewish. He didn't cease being that. It suddenly becomes something else. He's always been the head rabbi of Israel. So as he was talking about covenant, you know, the thing is, is that most times when you chalk, and this is one of these when I, uh, that I learned when I was teaching a Sunday school class, there within the church world, there are a lot of people that talk about testament or covenant, but yet we really have a very minute understanding of what covenant is really about. You know, we talk about, well, here's the Old Testament. Well, that was for then. Now we're New Testament believers. We're New Covenant. And, but if you ask them the details about how the covenant um, works, I find that there's very little details that are known about covenant. And what about the old, as far as being done away with, and then we're in the new and whenever the Lord says, I do not change, how can he forget the one to move to another without having it all kind of flow together? So every covenant that you'll see in scripture, he said he began reading the beginning of the book and you read all the way through. Well, you start at the very beginning and you have a covenant that's made with a guy by the name of Adam, right? Then you have a covenant made with a guy by the name of Noah right? Then there's the friend of God, Abraham, right? All of those covenants, do you think God remembers them? Yes. Are they still valid? Yes. That was a resounding yes. yes. So Abraham is called the friend of God and God said to him, because you're my friend, in you, all nations are going to be blessed. So Chuck's actually relating his whole story of how he found the Lord and how he is coming to a place of getting to know the Lord, even though he has myriads of experiences, myriads of visitations and talking with God. But when he said, you know, once you hear God's voice, then you have to follow. So once you hear God's voice, it's time you need to get in line, get in step, and follow God's will, right? In this season of time, what happens is it's, it's interesting to me that he was here, and then almost immediately you end up with the rockets being launched towards Israel. Why? Because it's time. God still keeps Israel. He has a covenant with that land, that people, and he will never go back on that covenant. He is a covenant keeping God. So when he, whenever he began to uh, relate his love for, for Israel and how uh, that's been a very important part of his ministry in his life for years, you know, obviously his ministry is called Glory of Zion, right? Glory of Zion. Guess what's in the glory of Zion? There's a house of David. God says, I'm going to restore the house of David back in that first covenant or old and said that there was going to be a glory that would come. And he had prophesied out years ago, and I can remember him years ago, 
uh, in a meeting that we was in down in eastern Oklahoma where he talked about the glory of the Lord flowing from the eastern part of Oklahoma all the way across the nation, but that it would start in eastern Oklahoma. Well, everybody assumed it was going to be in the church that he was at at that time, or a lot of people did, but he didn't say that. He just said it's going to be somewhere in eastern Oklahoma. There's going to be an outpouring and an awakening that sees the glory of the Lord sweep across all of Oklahoma and nations. Okay, now that's a word of the Lord. So once you hear the word of the Lord, what do you do? Follow the word of the Lord. You follow the word of the Lord. So as he's doing that and he's relating the covenant, and we're looking at Abraham, and he says that through you all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. He's made a promise to Abraham, and part of the warfare that we see going on in the Middle East right now is the warfare that's over that covenant. So it's a very timely word. See, that thing has been going on for hundreds and thousands of years. Who's got access to the covenant? Of course, in our world, this book is the truth, and it says Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? There's another part of the family that has a contention about that. The thing is, is that there was a testimony that took place when those rockets began to fly that as good as technology is, God's better. So it's important that we recognize the moment in which we live right now. You know, I think uh, the world was, was concerned with what was going on in the Middle East. Some of the markets got a little shaky. There were some things that saying, you know, you know, could this blow up into something more than just a little regional spat? People don't realize that it could have been World War III real easy. But it's not God's time for that to happen yet. So the Lord's in charge. Even when people make poor choices, God's still in charge. So we need to recognize the moment that we live in. He kept continued over and over saying to recognize that moment. You need to stay one step ahead of the enemy. Staying one step ahead of the enemy. Chuck Bean here is staying one step ahead of the enemy. Because what happens is not only is it, was it an endorsement in one sense for House of David here, but it's also, it's an endorsement that the Lord is opening some understanding from where I came from, which is traditional religion, and is opening some doors that somehow I thought 24, 25 years ago should have swung open a long time and just been embraced and found out that that was not the case. And it wasn't God's timing yet. So what happens is there has to be a foundation that's built and put in and God's timing is always perfect. Just as when he was dealing with Abraham and he told Abraham, look, you got a son coming, but it may not come exactly when you think. We don't wanna get out and begin creating Ishmael's. So wait for the promise. Hear the word, wait for the promise. My scripture tonight is out of Ephesians and all of you know this scripture. If you've been in House of David any length of time, you've heard this scripture because this is what we base our, um, the one new man move and directive is from this truth and this nugget that the apostle Paul pinned and put into the church at large that we were to remember. So my title tonight is review. Now, if you saw it online, they've, they've pumped it up. They put it on steroids and made it more effective. But mine is a review 
when you review something, what do you, what do, you do? You look again, right? You look again at what God is saying in this hour. The Lord is very close to returning. Very close. You know, Chuck said we're at a crossroads, right? This next two seasons, next two years, 24, 25, 26, America is at this tipping point. It's at this balance. Which way are you going to go? So you being in the house and putting your feet under your father's table, covenant meal is important. So Paul writes to the Ephesian church in chapter 2 and verse 11 says, Therefore remember. Why does he say remember? Because we forget. We, a lot of times, go through the motions and we don't remember the instruction. Therefore remember that you, look in the mirror, once Gentiles in the flesh... Because God made a promise to Abraham and said, through you all nations are going to be blessed, that even the Gentiles are going to be brought in and grafted into the covenants, oaths, and blessings of Israel, the chosen people, right? That's why you're at this table. It says, who are called uncircumcised by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. At one time we had no hope, but God, but God brought you to a place where you can put your feet under his table and say, that's mine. Amen. That relationship that God had with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is available to you in a much more enhanced and palatable way than what theirs was because of Jesus Christ. It says you had no hope without God in the world, but now, 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 you need to understand that you're living in a now moment with God. Chuck realized it last week. The warfare that was, he had to face and persevered through and got to the house. I believe he's totally healed. Totally healed. The thing is that the Lord wants to heal you as well. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Since you've been brought near and you're in the covenant with the Lord, everything, if you understand how covenant works, you understand that everything that God has is yours. Everything that you have is his. A lot of times we like it coming this way, but we're a little stingy when it comes to going back this way. And the thing about us is that we really don't have anything that God needs other than giving him our attention and our love. So it says that he is, we've been brought near by the, by the blood in Christ. He himself is our peace. People are searching desperately for peace in all sorts of things right now. There seems to be very little peace in the world, and yet you carry the gift that the world needs. It says he has made as our peace, he has made us both one, has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of the commandments contained in the ordinances. In other words, it's not about some religious ritual. This is about a relationship. It's always been about a relationship. It will always be about a relationship. God wants your heart. Yes. Says so as to create himself one new man from the two, thus making shalom. 
Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. The peace of God's rest abides in you. One of the things that Chuck said was he said, when you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, understand the warfare and the conflicts that's going on in and around the, the nation of Israel within and without. He says, somehow you're able to break through when you begin to pray Shabbat Shalom. He says, what happens is heaven is able to break through and bring peace in the midst of war. You have that authority and that power. He talked about the pay, the ability to speak. Dr. Osborne, whenever we used to visit with him, he would talk over and over about what a blessing we have to be able to be made in the image of God and to be able to speak God's word and see things move. Chuck said that House of David has been given the authority to unravel threefold cords. You know, through our ministry, we've talked a lot of times about how important it is for Jew, Gentile, First Nations to come together as a threefold, threefold cord that it's not easily broken. But I'd never really considered taking and unraveling all the other things that have a strong warfare against you that you have the ability and authority that you can also unravel those things. There's the good, but there's also the other side of the coin. So the authority now has been released that you can unravel and cancel things that have been spoken out and assaults, attacks, curses, other things that have been spoken out over you in times past, you can break those assignments now in this season of time better than what you could before. Why? Because it's a moment in time. Now you're aware of it. When you're aware of it, you can begin to fight with purpose. A laser focus. You know, it's one thing to shoot at a target that's 500 yards away with a shotgun. It's another thing to shoot at a target 500 miles away with a missile and strike it and destroy it and leave no other collateral damage. God can give you a missile that'll go through the enemy's window and blow his house out and leave yours restored and redeemed. He talked about the war on every front, people, boundary, and land. People, boundary or borders, and your land. God set and chose people. He established their borders. He put them in a land and then he blessed them in that land. If you'll stay within the boundaries and the borders, you'll treat people right. What happens? You'll find the Lord will work for you rather than against you. You won't have the offenses and you won't be opening doors for those shots coming back at you. Right? So there's the law of restoration and redemption. God wants to restore everything that the enemy has tried to steal from you. One new man has the ability to do that. Where you can come together with someone that may not look exactly like you and say, you know what? I may not, we may not look the same, but we have the same father. We have the same blood. We are one blood. We all came from one source. Therefore, we have commonality. Therefore, you know what? I can learn to love what sets you apart as your distinction and not see it as a threat. That comes from letting the love of God come and live in your heart. As you do that, you'll begin to love as the Father's love is towards all of us. In Exodus 12 and 37 and 38, this is, we're celebrating Passover, getting ready to go into the Passover season. And so that picture of Passover coming out, you saw how God dealt with the gods. You've seen old gods rise again. In our culture right now, 
you know, everything is trying to push God, the Lord, out and welcome other gods in. Whether it's technology, whether it's old gods, literally old gods. But there's a push trying to do everything they can to discredit what's been tradition as far as Judeo-Christian ethic in this nation. God made Israel. God also made the United States to stand with Israel. But there is a push right now to eliminate that so that the other group, so to speak, can have their way and cancel and deny that the Lord chose this one, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, rather than the other side. So that warfare is going on. The thing is, is that when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, God dealt with those old gods, he put them in their place, and it was such a witness and a testimony that there was a lot of other people that came out of Egypt rather than just the Jews, just the Israel, the tribes, right? So this verse talks of it, says the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot, about 600,000 men on foot besides the children. And then it says in 38, a mixed multitude went up with them also, flocks and herds, a great deal of livestock. There was a wealth exchange. Yes, yes. A tremendous exchange took place and provision for what the Lord was preparing for Israel to do in their journey to a promised land. Anytime the Lord is going to take you to a new land and establish the borders, there's going to be some folks that will go along with you, some for good, some for not so good, because they're just there for the provision. But the thing is that if you're ever going to go to this new place, you have to leave Egypt. You have to leave Egypt and leave Egypt behind rather than take it with you. One of the things, a lot of the, the things that happened to Israel in their journey was to get, is, get the Egypt out of Israel. They faced some hardships because what was their tendency? And what all of our tendencies are, let's go back to the old ways. It was easier back then. No, it wasn't. You've forgotten. That's why he, you know, he said in the first verse we read, remember, be truthful, be honest with yourself, remember. So as they're journeying out with this mixed multitude, there's Gentiles coming out. It says in the next verse here in, in Psalms 105, 37, it says, he also brought them out with silver and gold and there was none feeble among the tribes. So whenever he brought them out, not only did they bring their livestock, they brought all their provisions. That's what they had been doing in the land of Goshen for hundreds of years. But it says that they brought out silver and gold. Silver and gold, because that was going to be needed when they were going to go and begin to build the tabernacle for the places of worship, things that had meaning to the Lord and representing not only the glory of the Lord, but the redemption that the Lord was bringing into them. It wasn't so they could be rich in material things. It was so they could be rich in the relationship with their God. It says there was none feeble among the tribes, no sick people there. You know, you, you've heard it talked about how the children of Israel, when they were journeying through the wilderness 40 years, their clothes didn't wear out, their shoes didn't wear out. That's some pretty good material the last 40 years. Now, I hate to say that I've got some clothes in my closet that are probably 40 years old, <laughs> but it wasn't because they didn't wear out. It's because, you know what, they just got pushed in the back and they're still there. <laughs> so God's able to do something supernatural, isn't he? Why were they coming out and no feeble or no sick among them? Because they were full of the lamb. They'd come under the blood. The blood was on the doorpost. They had made some choices and decisions, and because of that, God healed them. Totally healed them. They was on a journey 
to a promise. You're on a journey to a promise. You're on a journey to a promise. God has purpose for you. Chuck also talked about this new season that we're going to be a Holy Ghost explosion. The reason there has to be a Holy Ghost explosion is because you're seeing all this other spirits that are being unleashed in the world and he's the restrainer. He's bringing about an explosion of the Holy Spirit. So this thing that a lot of people say, well, you know, we can do all this stuff, but, you know, we don't want those, you know, that, that, that Holy Ghost stuff. I mean, that's spooky stuff, you know, the speaking in tongues and all this other. Man, I can remember being raised up where we was raised up and, you know, they talked about that church. Man, it says they, they roll around on the floor and they, and we didn't, but the stories got extended, but we did speak in tongues. There were interpretation of tongues. There is prophecy, prophetic words that came because the Holy Spirit came and moved upon people to give direction. The Holy Spirit is going to be given some new directions here in the next few days, weeks, and months. And you're going to be able to do some things that you heard about maybe from some older timers, not Alzheimer's, old timers, <laughs> that says, you know what, God's still able to overcome any obstacle. Yes. Tough times produce faith. Provision for the work. One of the things that Chuck also said, and I'm getting ready to close, Rabbi, so I'm not going to go too long. I know him. He's got, he's got something to add to this. The thing is, is that the provision for the work is coming. Whenever Chuck had Rabbi and Christy up here, he says, look, you're going to be sought out. You're going to be sought out. You're going to be sought out. This is a new season where people didn't know what to do with you for a while. What box does this one fit into? Well, there isn't a box that this one fits into. Because God, you don't put God in a box. You can try, but what happens is you're, you're limiting what God can do for you if you do that. The thing is, is that God wants you to see him the way he really is. So this provision for the work is coming because it's time. It's time. When the Lord begins to do what he's going to do, and he's doing it now, I believe that season has already started. Some of you are experiencing or getting ready to experience some marvelous supernatural things that God has placed in reserve just for you. One of the things that Chuck also said was that those mantles and those different things that were there for his grandfather, father and great grandfather, now for four generations were being released. It's time. Those blessings, those mantles, those provisions that was ordained into your family line, into your inheritance. See, God is a great God about inheritance. About inheritance. God brings inheritance because he made a promise to Adam back in the garden that says, I'm going to redeem you and restore everything that was lost here. It's coming back full circle. I don't know if you know it or not, Adam had it made. Adam had it made. Adam still has it made. Because there was another Adam that came that says, I'm going to reverse the curse and I'm going to bring back everything that the enemy stole and he's going to have to bring it, pay it back with interest.
So in Amos 3 and 7, this is my final scripture. It says, surely the Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. So when you have a known prophet come to your house and he says, new is now, even though you've been doing this for 20 some years, new is now. This is a new season. You're going to have different results. Those things that have been held back and then it's like, well, I'm not sure how that's going to be accepted. Now it says you're going to be sought out. This is the, what the Kansas City intercessors were praying. I don't have this up, but in Isaiah 62 and 12, Rabbi relayed this to me. They've been praying this, that you will be called sought out, a city not forsaken. Sought out, sought out, sought out. God has raised you up for this season of time. You're not here by accident. God has chose you. You didn't choose God. God chose you. The Lord knows I don't know why he chose me. There's lots of better choices. But you know what? I'm so grateful that he allowed me in the house. And I pray that you have that same respect for the Lord. God doesn't make any mistakes. He chose you because you're a special treasure to him. And he's going to pour his spirit out upon you. And don't be surprised when supernatural things begin to happen because you said something. Because you declared it. You spoke it out. And you said, I'm going to follow him no matter what comes. There was a song we used to sing years ago as kid in the kids' church, I have decided, right? You all know it. Uh, you ain't gonna get me to sing it. I'll let Christy sing it. <laughs> the thing is, is that, have you decided? Have you decided? If you've decided, it's finished. When Jesus hung on the cross, he said, look, Father, I've done everything that you've asked me to do. It's finished. It's done. It says, had the enemy known what he was doing, he would have never crucified him. He would have never killed him. But now, because he did, now he brings justice. He brings the restoration and the redemption. Everything that the enemy has stolen from you has to come back. It has to come back. Amen. Rabbi, you want to come? That's just a brief review. That was but great. Let's give Pastor Tim a hand clap. That was excellent. So we're not singing the song? I don't know the song. I didn't go to Sunday school. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Tim. We have an intercessory prayer team. Uh, they love to remain anonymous, and they've been with us, and they're from another city, actually quite far away. But they have prayed for this ministry for, what, 15 years? been a long time. And uh, they gave this word to me in regards to what they thought happened with Apostle Chuck being here. So I'm going to bring that impartation. 
because I believe it's a message to prepare us for this Passover. And it's out of Isaiah 62, verse 10. And it starts with, go through, go through the gates. Okay? Each one of the cups is a gate. You have to make a decision that you're going to go through the gate, the redemption, the plagues, the healing, all each one of the gates, you need to go through the gate. Say, I'm prepared, I'm prepared. to go through the gates. And then it says, prepare the way for the people. All the volunteers, all the staff here, you are preparing the way for the people who will be in this house and the people who will be online. There is no victory without preparation. I can't stress enough to you to be prepared for what's going to happen Monday at the Passover. Overdo it this year. Be prepared. Amen. Amen. It says build up. Build up the highway and take out the stones. The whole Passover is about building up a highway and taking the stones. For those of you who are coming here, those of you who are joining us online, you have to go down Highway 125. You have to choose to turn right or left, depending whether you're coming from the north or the south. You have to park your car. None of that happens automatic. You have to choose to be here. I think that's what's so humbling, seeing people come from the other side of the world to be here is very humbling. And the cost and the risk of what they're doing is quite humbling. It should be a real wake up to the American Christians who could drive a couple of hours, but they've got something better to do. The Lord watches your feet. You've got to come down the highway. The highway has been laid wide open by Apostle Chuck to untangle the threefold cord. If you go into Ephesians 6, you have powers, principalities, heavenly hosts. This is a season where the revelation of not just being the three-fold uh, cord for covenant, but busting and decreeing the threefold and the fourfold cord of Ephesians 6. It's going to happen. You're going to be set free. Say, I'm going to be set free. But you got to take out the stones. That's why you go in the water. If you study out the whole Passover, it says... The Passover is for those who are circumcised. It says any strangers who are with you, if they want to participate in the Passover, they must be circumcised first. Think about that. Think about people were so moved that they would actually go out behind the house and literally take a flint stone and, and remove the foreskin so that they could actually get the blessing of the Passover table. That's some pretty serious commitment. So you need to come intentionally. You need to come with expectation and honor God. This is not a religious activity. Paul spoke about it in the New Testament about celebrating Passover 
without malice, but by faith. As you consume the land, the Lord will consume you. The latter rain glory of the prophetic word that was spoken by Apostle Chuck years and years ago about it coming out of the east is coming Monday night in this house. It's coming. So the reason I'm sharing that with you is that you will have to press through. I'm not at liberty to say what he pressed through, but he was extremely challenged. And everyone that brought him here said, let's go home. And he said, no, I'm, I'm going to House of David. There's sometimes, there's some moments that you can't miss in your life. And when you remove the stones, what you're doing, what stones are is extra weight, so to say, in your backpack or things that you're carrying that you don't need. The Lord is your shepherd. I shall not want. Verse 11, I'm sorry, verse 10 says, and lift up a banner for the people. That's what Apostle Chuck was talking about, House of David, your ministry. It's not our ministry. It's not my ministry. It's your ministry. This is your house. What is the banner? It's one new man. If you understand what that is, is that is reconciliation between the brothers. That reverses the curse of the way of Cain. The only hope the world has is the covenant of one new man, applying the blood of Jesus for reconciliation of the people. Without the reconciliation of the blood of the one new man, we will do nothing but war, compete, and murder each other. It is the cross. Because when he died on that cross as the Lamb of God, he created a bridge for us to be reconciled to the Father and reconciled to each other. That's why he took 613 mitzvahot, the law, 613 and condensed it to two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your might and love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's one new man. If we want God to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ask or think, in Ephesians 3.20, we have to have the covenant that Pastor Tim just spoke. Remember, if you're part of the commonwealth, then you're no longer a foreigner and stranger, meaning you're no longer an orphan. You're no longer black. You're no longer white. You're no longer native. You're no longer Jew. You are one new man from the two. We return to one blood. And I, believe me, understand and paid a price for 33 years being a Jewish believer because I've had a lot of people say, well, your ministry could grow a lot more powerful if you drop the rabbi. How do you drop who you are? And how will they know that the end is coming if the Jews don't rise up as Jews as the fig tree and start embracing Messiah. That's the banner that you see here. Verse 11, and I'm closing. Indeed, the Lord proclaimed, everything we do in the all says together, coming on Sunday night, it's important that you verbalize it in your mouth as we decree and declare the words of the Lord. Say, I will proclaim. To the, the ends of the world. With this technology, we actually can do that. 
The scripture says, say to the daughter of Zion, surely your salvation has come. Say, my salvation is here. here. It's Passover 5784. And as Pastor Tim said, the transfer of wealth comes and it says here, behold, his reward is with him and his works before him. The transfer of wealth and the glory are coming at the same time. Those who are ready with Habakkuk, you've written the goals to grow. You've been praying, you've been prophesying, you've been proclaiming, it's time. So now the glory's coming. The glory is basically the light and the revelation that removes the fear and empowers your faith over your fear so that you can process all the nine gifts of the spirit with clarity and intention. That's coming here Monday. That's what the glory does. And they shall be called the holy people. Passover is a redemptive feast of the Lord. Redemptive in Hebrew means kadosh, means to be set apart, sanctified, and holy. The redeemed of the Lord we will be called the redeemed of the Lord. Redemption means there was a price paid to remove the debt. The price has been paid to remove the debt. All of us have sin and continue to sin. All of us have past sins and iniquitous structures in our family line. Passover is a time where the gift of God comes in that first cup of redemption to cancel the debt. The wages of sin is death. The reason there's healing at Passover is because the redemptive cup is recognized in the courts of heaven and it cancels the sin, which is the legal right of the accuser of the brethren, Satan, Hazatan, that Satan, he uses the wage of the sin to inflict the infirmity, the poverty, the disrest, the divorce, the conflicts. So when the cup of redemption comes and we come in agreement with it, it cancels the wage of the sin which cancels the symptoms in your body, in your mind, and your soul, and your spirit. Come on, give the Lord shout. And this is why the intercessors gave us this word, and it says, and you shall be sought out a city not forsaken. It's time for one new man to be sought out. You are going to witness, all of you, you're going to witness the revival of of Israel and the Jewish people coming to Messiah. You will see it in your lifetime. This isn't a far off. This is already getting ready to happen because the time to favor Zion is now. And everything that is favoring Zion is going to prosper exceedingly, abundantly above all you could ask or think. And praise God that you have been grafted in and that we can come to a unique Passover, doors of destiny, where one new man comes and aligns with God for a Holy Spirit explosion of God's glory that the blood of Jesus immerses us and sets us free from all of our past. And he may not take every fear, but he will cancel every fear with abundant faith. Because all you need to leave with is your faith needs to have more influence in your soul than your fear. And you will walk this out and you will prosper. And the banner over your family will be Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let's give the Lord a great big shout. Hallelujah. Let's give Pastor Tim 
Come on, give him a good hand clap. Thank you so much. That was so good. So at this time, we're going to receive our tithes and offering. If we can find the ushers amidst the chairs. We've never seen chairs quite like this. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for your generosity online. You can go to kurtlandry.com forward slash donate. I would encourage all of you to pray about your Passover offering. And I would encourage you to sow what the Lord speaks to you about sowing. Some of you are going to have some pretty large, scary numbers spoken to you. And the fact that it's scaring you is because you're looking at your finance as the provision over him as Jehovah Jireh. But the reason he is asking you for some larger giving in this season, I can't remember who I was speaking to the other day, but I used Pastor Tim as an example. And this isn't the right number, but you'll get the idea. If you are planting 2,000 acres, then the 2,000 acres are only of real value if you have 2,000 acres of seed and fertilizer and the ability to prep the land. Just owning it, it actually, without being able to produce off it, it actually becomes a liability and not an asset. And the longer you don't farm it, farm it, the more expensive it gets because it starts to return back to its natural state. So the Lord is promoting you. And you need to ask the Lord, you have a few days here, if you only plant a seed for 100 acres with 2,000 acres, your liability will actually overtake the asset of the 100 acres. Are, are you getting, can you see this? This is what he, I shared this with somebody and I can't remember now, I've had a busy week. But whoever I shared it with got it. So what happens is you have to plant a seed that's appropriate to what you believe you're going to need. And the seed has to do with trust and faith. If the Lord is promoting you to a larger field and a larger harvest, one of the reasons people resist growth is not because of the lack of opportunity, but it's the lack of if you expand, then you're going to have to increase your ability to manage the expansion and you're going to have to increase your workload, and your responsibility. Because a lot of times people say, I would love just to be able to win Publishers Clearinghouse so I could sow a big seed to your ministry. And I've heard that many times. And I always bless people and I pray it happens. But I don't have a lot of faith in it. Because what happens is if you can't manage 100 acres you're never going to be trusted with 2,000 acres. And so that's why one of the scriptures that's quoted in, in Passover is the scripture says, and the Lord shall give you the land little by little by little. Why, why are we quoting that scripture in the Haggadah is because what happens is, Lord, trust me with 100, trust me with 200, trust me with 500, Trust me, and that's how your giving needs to be. Because if you're not in an accelerated sowing, then what happens is you're, the reason you're stuck is because the Lord is not going to give you an increase 
if you will not demonstrate an increase to him. And, and I'm not talking about sacrificial giving that gets you in trouble. I'm going to say it again. I am not talking about sacrificial giving that gives you in trouble. That is not a word for you if you're in financial trouble. I'm talking about those of you who have the finances, but your rainy day fund is in the way of your raining day fund. And you know who I'm talking to. And this is one of the pilgrim feasts. This is actually New Year's will be on the 22nd, Monday. We start a, the spiritual calendar. This will be the new year. So this will be the first seed you sow into the new year. And I agree with Apostle Chuck. The Lord gave him a word up to 2026 and didn't give it to him any further than that. And I hadn't said anything to him. And that's all the Lord has allowed me to see into. But I do know this. The harvest of souls, the harvest of souls in the next two years is going to be more in the next 20, 48 months, I mean 24 months, than any other time in history. And we have the technology through AI to affect the whole world. And all it needs is finance. We have the recipe. We just need to go from making cupcakes and sharing them with a few people, and we need to become Little Debbie. <laughs> so to say, if you're from around here, you'll know what that means. For those who don't know, it's a snack cake that, I don't know how many, they probably millions a month they put everywhere. But that's all we need to do is we just need to expand it. And the Lord's going to do that, amen? But we always need to remember it's the Lord who did that, not man. But the Lord is, is calling the harvest and the laborers are few. So just wave your hand at the Lord and say, Lord, I'm here. Send me. Now, while you're waving your hand, one of the things that Apostle Chuck talked about was new mantles. Go ahead and just close your eyes right now. Come on, those of you online, and just wave your hand right now and say, Father God, tonight on Shabbat, I ask in Yeshua's name for my new mantle, my new health, my new wealth, my new vision, my new purpose for this next 24 months. I am a harvester in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. So the Storehouse Fresh Market is open tonight so you can get your produce and eat some good salad and produce and then go eat some cookies <laughs> and some other uh, sweet gifts that are in next door. But anyway, let's give all of our online family a big shout. God bless you. Now, we will see you in the immersion. Uh, I don't know what the time is, but you can read about it online. But the immersion will be We'll, uh, we're going to do instruction on why we're immersing, and uh, so we'll give that instruction, and that will be on Sunday, and I think it's around 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and so we'll be on probably for about 20 minutes. I'll be explaining how that works so that you can immerse at your house. For those of you in-house, what we're going to do is what the Lord showed me to do is we're going to have our intercessors and our leadership there and some of the leadership, and you can go to them, and while you're preparing for this, where, what is the root of the weakness of what, what causes you to implode? When you have your 18% moment and you go off the rails, what's the root of it? Where's the fear coming from? Identify it. You don't have to give them specifics, but you can say, 
This happened to me when I was younger. It's created fear and it's hard for me to trust and it's hard for me to trust God. Say, great, let's confess your fault to your brother. They'll confess it and then you take it into the water and you come out of agreement with it and cut the soul tie in your heart and let the Lord, according to Colossians, make a spectacle of it by binding it and casting it out of your life into the lake of fire in Yeshua's name, amen? So I want you to be able to do that. I'll explain how that works. This will be a different immersion, but you'll actually be going in. We'll have a few people in the water just in case you uh, go out in the spirit. We're not gonna just leave you floating in there by yourself. And um, so, but this is about you confessing according to James and going in and circumcising your heart and burying it so that when we all come at this table on Monday night, that you're, you've buried the things that have tried to hinder you because this is the year he's going to set you free. Just follow the instruction. It's easy. Say, I can do this. I Say, I can do this. I will be transformed into the likeness of Christ because Christ is my Passover lamb. And as I consume him, he consumes me. He's brought me here to transform me and all things will be made new in Yeshua's name. God bless you and Shabbat Shalom. So those in the house, you can bring your offerings down front. Please hug somebody's.